When it comes to wake turbulence, most training focuses on takeoff and landing. But at high altitude, aerodynamic margins are narrow, and while thrust is available, it's significantly reduced, typically in the range of 30 to 40 percent of what's available at sea level. Thrust management remains essential, however, reduced power limits how quickly energy can be regained during upset prevention or recovery. This makes precise control of speed, drag, and angle of attack critical. At or near cruise altitude, the margin between stall and MMO narrows dramatically, sometimes to as little as 10 to 15 knots with low speed and high speed buffet boundaries compressing the window of safe operation. FAA Advisory Circular 90-23 Gulf Aircraft Wake Turbulence highlights how this narrowing of aerodynamic margins increases vulnerability to upset if control discipline is not maintained. Today, we'll unpack one of the most serious high-altitude wake turbulence encounters ever documented, the Challenger 604 upset over the Arabian Sea, as detailed in the German Federal Bureau of Aircraft Accident Investigations Interim Report. A Bombardier Challenger 604 was en route at flight level 340, cruising above the Arabian Sea on airway Lima 894, when an Airbus A380 passed overhead on the same airway at flight level 350, just a thousand feet above, opposite direction. Roughly 50 seconds later, the Challenger entered the A380's wake vortex. The aircraft was abruptly rolled over, lost control, descended nearly 9,000 feet and sustained structural damage beyond repair. Several passengers were seriously injured, according to the report. At cruise levels, wake vortices descend at 3 to 500 feet per minute and can persist for over 3 minutes in calm air, descending up to 1,000 to 1,200 feet, sometimes more. The lateral spread can exceed 5 miles and result in hazardous conditions for aircraft trailing or crossing at the wrong point. Again, Advisory Circular 90-23 Golf makes clear that persistent vortices, particularly in low turbulence conditions, remain a significant threat to trailing aircraft, even at cruise. The Challenger was on the airway centerline, and although the A380 was above by 1,000 feet, the vertical offset wasn't sufficient to avoid the descending wake. Smooth conditions, low turbulence, and the absence of an authorized offset on airway Lima 894 left the aircraft vulnerable. The Procedures for Air Navigation Services Air Traffic Management, ICAO Doc 4444, formally recognizes the role of the Strategic Lateral Offset Procedure, or SLOP, in reducing the risk from both mid-air conflict and wake encounters, especially in non-radar controlled airspace. More on this later. The Challenger rolled violently and rapid aggressive control inputs led to multiple full rotations. The inertial reference system failed, and recovery wasn't possible until visual cues allowed the crew to re-establish attitude awareness. Structural loads exceeded the design envelope, and the aircraft was declared a total loss, according to the report. This highlights a critical principle. Over-control can have severe consequences. That's not an opinion. It's backed by analysis from the Airplane Upset Recovery Training Aid Revision 2 High Altitude Supplement which recommends precise minimum control movements at altitude to prevent secondary upsets due to narrow aerodynamic margins near buffet and mock limits. Let's now discuss a well-established tool commonly used on oceanic routes relevant to today's discussion, the Strategic Lateral Offset Procedure, or SLOP. SLOP exists specifically for this risk. ICAO and regional authorities allow a 1 to 2 nautical mile right offset from airway center lines in oceanic airspace to reduce collision risk and mitigate wake encounters. And where approved, slop must be considered. However, aircraft must be equipped with automatic offset tracking, and even then, not all airways authorize its use. In this case, Mumbai FIR had published slop approval, but not on airway Lima 894. That made the Challenger's routing procedurally compliant but exposed, a point clearly demonstrated in the report. The crew wasn't permitted to use an offset to avoid wake risk, and the A380's wake vortices reached them. Now before we wrap up, let's summarize a few key takeaways. Respect wake geometry. At high altitudes, vortices can sink up to a thousand feet or more and drift laterally for miles. Separation in time and space, not just altitude, is required. The previously mentioned advisory circular reinforces the importance of anticipating wake location based on flight path geometry and aircraft category. 
Use slop where authorized. Consider applying a 1 to 2 nautical mile write offset when permitted and equipped. A KO Doc 4444 promotes this practice to reduce convergence and mitigate mid air and wake risk in oceanic airspace. Prevent and recover with discipline. At or near maximum altitudes, control margins are razor thin. Respect mock limits, avoid abrupt pitch changes, and use small coordinated control inputs as emphasized in the Airplane Upset Recovery Training Aid Revision 2 High Altitude Supplement. In level to even mildly nose high low energy recoveries, you're often operating in the region of reverse command, below LOPD max speed, where restoring airspeed typically requires reducing angle attack, advancing thrust, and accepting a descent. Review the operational context. Not all airways allow slop. Review FAR specific approvals, airspace authorizations, and offset eligibility carefully. In closing, the Challenger 604 event wasn't just a matter of procedural compliance. It was a scenario that demanded high altitude handling skill, aerodynamic understanding, and measured control. While the wake encounter initiated the event, the structural failure followed as a result of aggressive recovery inputs. These findings presented in the official report remind us that legality alone does not guarantee safety. Precision, knowledgeable action, and patience, not panic, keep the crew ahead of the airplane and in control at altitude, not to mention the traveling public safe. Know the envelopes, respect your margins, be aware of, respect, and train for the edge. You got this.